Hi friends, I'm Asaf from Easy Approach and it's the 20th video of Flutter video series. In this video, we're gonna make cart application that we have discussed in the 18th video. So actually in this application, we would have two different screen. The first one would be the product screen in which we would show all the product in a list view so that user can select and put it into the cart. And the second screen would be the checkout screen on which all the selected items would be shown in a list view and user can see the total price as well on that screen. So I have done one thing to save the time inside the lib. I have made a product model to save the information of product. It has just two different properties. The first one is the name and the second one is the price. And there's a constructor as well to initialize these value. So what I'm going to do, I'm just removing the existing code from this main file and I'm just going to replace this my homepage with card app. And here I'll make a stateful widget, which would be the root widget uh, for our application. Actually, the root widget is this, but uh, this would be the main widget of our application in which we would implement the tab view and we'll define two different screen, uh, one for checkout and second for the product. And here what we need to do, uh, we need to make uh, two different screen first. So I'm going inside this lib, creating a new package with the name screens. And here I would uh, make two different class actually, two different dart files. The first one uh, would be the product screen. And the second one would be the checkout screen. So now you can import the material.dart file and implement the basic structure. I'm gonna make it a stateless widget for now. If I need to change it uh, to uh, stateful, I would do it later. So just name it. And copy the same code and paste here just change the name so just change the name here product screen and now what you need to do here uh, inside the build you need to implement uh, the um, actually the tab view structure so firstly you need to uh, make a default tab controller here you need to give the uh, length which would be two as the screens of our application is two. And now in the child, uh, you need to give a scaffold widget. Inside the scaffold, you need to define app bar. Inside the app bar, there's a property title where you can give uh, the title of the app bar. So you need to give here a tax widget and give it uh, the card application. And now inside this, you need to give bottom property where you'll define the tab bar. And as your uh, application has two different tabs, so just uh, give here a uh, tabs to a different tab by create by using this tab and you can uh, give here tags icon and a customized widget as well. So I'm giving here just tags and write uh, the product. Oh, and the second one uh, would be the checkout. And now if I refresh it, you can see this application. So it, it is implementing uh, the uh, tab bar. So now we'll uh, make the code for this product screen where we'll show, uh, where we'll show all the uh, products that's available in the stock. We need to have all the available products here on this screen in a list view so that user, user can select and add it into the cart. So before making a list view, you need to have a list of all the available items defined here. So I have already made a list of available product. You can make your own uh, to save the time. I have just defined it already. And now what you need to do, uh, you need to import this product.model file, sorry, product.model.dot file. So you can import this by clicking on this bulb or you can uh, import this by writing this. And now what you need to do, you need to make a list view dot separated. And here you have three different uh, uh, parameters or properties, which is uh, item builder and separator builder and the item count. And in the item count, you need to give uh, the length of this product. So you can give the length by products dot length. And here you need to uh, just return uh, the, you need to first pass here context and the index, and you just return here a divider. So it will divide all the items of this uh, uh, list view. And now what you need to do, this is the main thing where you need to define uh, how uh, your item of this list view would look like. And you need to first pass here context and index. And now inside this, you need to return uh, a list style. And in this list style, we'll uh, show uh, the price and the title of this product. So you can give here title where you can give the title of the product. Just use here a tax widget. Inside this, give uh, the product dot, and you can access uh, the correspond uh, product by using uh, this by passing here index. And this is uh, how you can get the correspond uh, value of product. And now you can pass here name. And now uh, 
you can also give uh, on this list tile you can also show the price as well so i want to use i want to show the price at the right hand side so you can uh, use here trailing it would show the whatever you give here it would show at the at the right side of the list tile and now you can give here the price so how can you give you can use inverted commas and if if you want to access some uh, some variable in inverted commas you can use it by using dollar sign and now you just need to use products and you can access uh, the correspond product by using this index and you need to use here uh, braces as well as we are using uh, this square bracket as well so you can give here index and now you can access the price property and i can also style it by using text style i want to change the color of it to red so now if we uh, refresh it there is no result as uh, I don't think we have uh, defined here a tab view. So we also need to define a tab view here. So you can give here body and inside the body you need to uh, pass here tab bar view. So in here you need to pass uh, uh, in children you need to pass two different screen. The first one is the product screen. And second one is the checkout screen. And you need to make sure about the positions if this is uh, this tab is at first position it's correspond uh, tab bar view should be on the same position so this product it is at first so this product screen should be at first too so now if I refresh this you can see the list uh, tile or the list of all the available products but this uh, um, this tax uh, which is of price is a is a it should be a little prominent so what we can do we can uh, give here a font size property so that we can increase the font and make it uh, like uh, 20 and you can make it bold as well by using this font weight now if I refresh it you can see it now prominent and you can also concatenate the dollar sign here uh, you can uh, use here dollar and just use here a forward slash so that it is a printed it's it 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 must print as it is and you can see uh, the uh, all the available products uh, in in this uh, on this screen now what we need to do whenever the user would tap on some particular item it should be added to the card but we haven't created yet the card which would be the list of product model and it should be empty as default so what we need to do because this checkout is screen and this product is screen they both will use the card either to insert because this product and uh, product screen will be inserting uh, products in, in that card and this checkout screen will be reading that card to make uh, the uh, the bill or doing all the checkout uh, checkout operations so we need to have uh, the the card list uh, in a global widget so for this checkout screen and product screen the global widget is this card app as this is the parent of these two screens so what we can do we can make here a list of uh, product models which is basically our card and it should be empty uh, as default and we'll be adding product uh, products in this card in this on by this screen so what we need to do we need to make here on tap so that we can sense when the user uh, tap on this uh, on a particular item now what we need to do it's the most important thing now as this card in which we need to insert the selected card is in this uh, in this parent widget so basically uh, we need to somehow uh, get the selected uh, tile, uh, get the selected product, and we need to pass in the parent of this product screen, which is this cart app here. So we need to insert here basically. So what we can do, we can do, we can use a callback inside this on tap, so that when the user would tap on some some particular product, we can acknowledge uh, the parent of this product screen, which is this card app where the list of card is actually available or defined so actually this product is screen is called here so we'll be getting the acknowledgement whenever the user would tap here so that we can add the selected or the tapped item inside this list but how can we get the selected item or the tap item with the uh, callback so we can do it by using the value setter callback to make the value setter callback you need to come here at the top of this product screen widget and you need to make a final value setter 
And here you need to pass the type of the data that you'll be sending with this callback. So I'll be sending the product model whenever the user would tap on some particular item. So as that's the reason why I use here a product model. And you can give any name to this value setter. And now we need to initialize this value setter by using constructor as we'll be sending the callback from this uh, uh, from this main file. So we need to accept it or initialize it by using constructor. So what you can do, you can make product screen constructor. And I'm using here uh, the short end for constructor. You can initialize the instance variable by using uh, by giving here this dot instance variable name. And this would initialize the value whatever would be given here. This would initialize to here. And now we just need to call this callback whenever the user would tap on some particular item. So we can call this callback by using this value setter. And in here you need to pass the selected product as well as this is accepting uh, the product model as an argument. So what we can do, we can uh, pass here a products and you can give here the index that would pass the selected product to this main dot dot file. But how can you get this, um, this uh, selected product? So you can get it uh, by using uh, this you need to first define here a function which is an anon anonymous function as a callback and here you need to accept it so just give it a name uh, the selected product so now you can get the you can have uh, that selected product which would be tapped by the user on this screen you can get this selected product by uh, using this selected product name in this file so now we can add this selected product in this card so what we can do we can call here sad state as this would change the UI or this would change the state of our application that is the card so now we can add the selected product to this card and then one more thing we need to have another variable as well which is for the sum so just make an integer a variable of sum so that we can uh, we can hold the, or we can calculate all the sum so initially it would be zero but whenever the item would be added we would uh, change it but we will we'll update it later and now work now we'll work on this checkout screen now we need to have this card list inside this checkout screen so that we can show all the selected items here so what we need to have we need to have an instance uh, variable here which would be the final uh, list final card we can say and now we need to initialize it by using constructor we can initialize it by by using this this dot card and now from here we can send uh, this uh, we can send this card in this checkout screen and now we need to render uh, the we need to use here list view so that we can show all the available items but we need to show here this sum as well so i am using here a column widget and inside the column widget i would have two different child the first one would be the list view and the second one would be the uh, would just be the uh, tag so that we can show uh, sum on that text widget so what i'm doing here i'm just making here a list view initially which would be the uh, separated list view to uh, separate all the items and now we need to pass here all the required things so i'm uh, doing it a little faster as you all know how to do it So I've done with this list view, I have just used here shrink wrap property, which is a new thing. And we just use it to uh, to give the minimum size of the list view so that it can cover all the content. Now we need to give now we need to make here a tax widget as well so that we can show the sum. So I'm just uh, using here the tax widget and we need to accept here some as well. So I'm using your final sum and initialize it in this constructor. And now just you need to call this sum here. And I, I want to add concatenate the dollar sign as well. So I'm using here uh, this dollar sign and we need to use here a uh, backslash as well so that we can uh, tell the compiler, the flutter actually, that this uh, dollar should be printed as it is. And we need to have a little space in between so I can use here divider as well. So now what uh, we can do, uh, we can also give here cross access alignment dot start so that we can see all the content at the left hand side. And now I think uh, we have done everything just we haven't uh, uh, we need to pass here some as well but we haven't uh, yet uh, calculated this sum to calculate this sum we can use card dot for each it would iterate each of the item of this card and here you need to pass the name of uh, each of the item uh, of your card and you can give anything and now inside this curly braces you can do whatever uh, you want to do with each of the item of this card so what I need to do I need to uh, 
add the price of the item to the existing sum so we can do sum equals to sum plus item dot price but we need to do one thing uh, as we'll be calculating from the scratch every time whenever the user would uh, add some item so we need to uh, make it uh, initially zero inside this uh, uh, set state so that we can get the proper sum now if i run this application And if I select uh, uh, some items, uh, like uh, I am selecting Mike, which is of 50 USD. So this must uh, be a pair on this checkout screen and with the total of $50, $50 actually. So you can see here Mike at the top and there is 50 USD total. So now if I come back and select some more items like LED monitor and it should be, uh, there should be two items with the sum of 150. So you can see here two items with a sum of 120. And now if I select a speaker as well, um, no, I think it's getting out of my budget. Now we can select CD. So it's good. Now there's three items and it is 153. So this is how you can make a comprehensive Flutter application. I think in this video we have covered so many things and you can make uh, a many different uh, applications by using this technique. It is just a simple technique in which we have used a stateful widget and we have used some callbacks uh, to inform or acknowledge uh, the picture from child to parent. So this is it from this video and there is an assignment that I, I need to give you. Uh, whenever we are clicking on some particular item, uh, we are not getting any acknowledgement that we have uh, added some item in the cart. So there is one thing which is called a snack bar and you should know how to use it for search it and add in this application and post the link of your github on the comments so that i can i can see and check uh, your progress so this is it from this video if you like the video please share the video and subscribe my channel and press all the bell icon so that you can get the notification of the videos that i am gonna upload thank you